good morning football to you, Mr. Silver. Thanks, Kay. And a year ago, after the Rams traded up to get the first pick, I got accused of sucking away the suspense by essentially proclaiming that Jared Goff would go first overall. So I'm going to try really hard not to preordain any pick. And uh, well, what listen, are the Browns, the Browns are, gonna are do still talking. <laughs> They're still, they're still talking about this, and uh, Miles Garrett would be the obvious choice, and in 31 other uh, facilities, I believe it would already be settled. There is some internal debate here. Some in the front office are of the belief that uh, North Carolina quarterback Mitchell Trubisky should be the first pick, and so there are different scenarios. There is the trade-down scenario. There is the take Trubisky first overall, or do you try to get them both, and that is – taking Miles Garrett with that first overall pick and then trying to get back up from the number 12 selection. And the Browns have been doing dil due diligence on this, communicating with teams who are in between those 1 and 12 spots. Would they trade up to, say, number 6 with the Jets to try to get Mitchell Trubisky there? Would they go all the way to number 2, uh, which San Francisco currently holds, uh, if they – believe that he could be gone as early as the second pick with the 49ers. That's something that Sashi Brown and uh, the others in the front office have to gauge. But uh, a lot of scenarios still in play here as we get closer to the actual uh, draft in a few days. Mike, I love that you're already in Berea. You're already on the ground. We're four days in advance. We're here. It's draft week. Now, look, we know Hugh Jackson and Greg Williams are football guys. The front office, though, there are questions. Are they sabermetrics? Are they analytics? They've got 11 picks in this draft, including the 12 and the 33 in addition to the 1. Do you have any idea on the philosophy going into this and whether it'll be Hugh making a decision or it'll be those front office guys and their abacus and the numbers and all that stuff coming into play? Really good questions, Peter. I'll answer the second one first. It will be the front office guys making these decisions. And last year, they kind of wowed us with their ability to trade down and parlay uh, what they had into additional picks, which is awesome. Uh, any analytic uh, assessment would tell you that, but you've also got to know who to pick. They took 14 uh, players last year. All of them made the team, but really we're kind of short on impact players, so the jury's still out. So, yes, in theory, they could do that again. But I also believe that they've acquired enough ammunition uh, since that time to now maybe make that pay off. And that's why you go back to that scenario where do you have to choose between Garrett, who virtually everyone in football believes is the uh, clear number one selection, and the quarterback you want, which in the front office's case right now is Mitchell Trubisky. Uh, I do believe that they are open to trading back up and trying to get both, and, and they're definitely having those conversations as we speak. Good, because I want like a million trades in that first round Thursday night in <laughs> Philadelphia. Michael Silver, thanks for joining us. I think this is this your debut on our show, maybe live? Uh, you know, it's tough for us West Coasters, mm -hmm. but here I am battling through thanks to the wonders of caffeine and <laughs> saying to you, Kay, good morning football. Yay! Yay!